Welcome to the Jungle Brothers Podcast. It's Joey, and today I am joined by Sydney's most prolific podcaster, Paul Photophilia. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> So, bro, not a lot of people can claim having multiple podcasts <laughs> to their name. Except for you and me. That's right, baby. <laughs> Bones. Boosh. Yeah, um, <laughs> I'm blushing. It's just recent, uh, well, last week, yes, we kicked off another podcast. Dylan, the, Dylan and I. What's the name? It's the Jungle Botany Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm open to a name change. Um, Dylan's like, that's, that's what it is. And I was in the newsletter, writing the newsletter to the gang. And I was like, if you guys got any suggestions for a name, I'm, I'm, I'm open to hearing it. I didn't get any suggestions, but have you got any? Uh, not off the top of my head, no. I, I, know, it, it, I know what you mean. The two that, are, you know, this one and Bulletproof, they've just got the brand name as the name. And you're like, well, we could have had a bit more fun with that. Plus, it's, too, it's already too similar in that, you know, people are trying to separate. Oh, what, what are you doing? Are you... Jungle Jungle, brother, yeah. And what is that one and what is this one? Like, it doesn't help that the names sound almost the same. What about Botany Strong? I said Botany Strong. Um, but fuck anything like that. That'd be good. Yeah. I yeah, like I hear. Strong. But I foresee that you're just going to be called Jungle Botany. True. Because you've started now and it's like, uh, it's easier not to change once you get down the track. We only had one name ever. Yeah. For this show? Yeah. Yeah, Jungle Brothers. Which is somewhat novel now because we changed the name of the gym. You know, it used to be called that, now it's called Jungle Botany. So it's actually the only place besides our emails which where the Jungle Brothers name lives on. It exists in the space between you and me right now, bro. It's, it's true, bro. And T's in my text messages. <laughs> <laughs> the prodigal son who never returned. T or a Jungle Brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you seen June 2? I can't wait to see. Did you say it? Sorry, yesterday. Fuck. Yeah, cool. Good? Like, yeah. Wicked. Yeah, yeah, re- yeah, great. I'll say no more. Okay. Um, yeah, go see it. Yeah, Matt, I was all about this weekend seeing it, but nah, Tashi's working, this and that going on. I couldn't even just sneak away for like that 9.30 to midnight session. Oh, bro. That's I, how I watched the first one. <laughs> did you? Because it's yeah. two and three quarter hours. Yes. You need to... I don't know, do some class A's or something to keep you up for that one. <laughs> I'd love, yeah. I'd, I'd so maybe next weekend I'd see it. Yes, yeah. Oh, cheesy. Um, I want to talk about imposter syndrome today. And this, I'll explain the relevance. This came about from a conversation I was having with our boy Sammy. Okay. Sam Waterton Johnson. Oh, okay. Morning, cool. who, who said he caught up, you guys had coffee the other yeah. day. Whatever. Yeah. I didn't know he's got an office just there. Yeah. Oh, I forget that all the time, actually, that he's just there. Well, I just I just thought he was being a savage and going to work, like training in the morning, going to work, coming back at lunchtime, you know, so many days a week. But it's, his office is just there. It is, yeah. In the WeWork or whatever that is. Yeah. So local, bumped into him at the cafe, and I was like, what are you doing here at this time of the day? Anyways. Good human. Good human. He's got the Super. Impact Policy podcast, Super by the way. Super good, man. Shout out to the show, Impact Policy um, but the imposter syndrome piece was is actually interesting. He brought it up, and it was a it was a it was an interesting chat. He brought it up after the conversation with you because he said he said to me, "Fuck, how good is it, Paul? He's gone back to study, like studying public health and stuff." I'm like, yeah, it's mate. He's like, uh, uh. he's like, yeah, I read I read when he announced it in the in the newsletter. Okay, yeah, he told me about like you know losing his mom and. You know, and he's designer, uh, and he's like, "It's so cool," you know. And he said, "It'd be so cool, like, um, for him to share that journey," you know. Yeah. yeah. And then he he was he referenced uh, Shona, who we've had on the show, Shona Virtue. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And he's like, you know, how Shona, like, she's a psychology student, and she always talks about what she's learned at, mm-hmm. at uni, mm-hmm. and then she ties it in and makes it some way relevant to the viewer. Yes. You know, this is this. The, here's this thing I learned and here's what it tells us about your behavior. I think that's great. Yeah, it's beautiful. And I was like, bro, you know what's super fascinating about that was that it's because I thought about this immediately with you 
mm. that you're not going to want to talk about what you're studying <laughs> on your social media. Yeah. Because at that time, when you are a declared amateur in this realm, yes. like you've just started studying it. First year undergrad, baby. That's right. You are at the height of your newbie. Yeah. You newbie are isn't. you are like like openly a complete beginner. And so that's when imposter syndromes I was actually thinking that's when imposter syndrome's at its highest. It may not be. We can talk about that after, but mm. it's very high at that point. Because mm. you're like, I clearly know nothing about this. That's why I'm year one. Yeah. Yep. And I thought, fuck, Shona obviously would have gone through that too. Where she'd be like, what right do I have to talk about psychology here on my Instagram account, which is largely fitness related? Mm. But she's found a way to do it where she's very openly acknowledging that she is a beginner. Mm. But she's leveraging that into, well, look at this interesting thing that I've learned. Let me share it with you. And now let me show you how I see this as being relevant to you. Mm. And so you accept it and you're like, that's so awesome. You know, like she's not pretending to be someone that she's not. Yep. So I thought, wow, she just in that exchange with Sam, I'm like, she's really done an amazing job of circumventing this imposter syndrome mechanism that we all have. Yeah, she has. Because she's got every reason to not talk about psychology on her Instagram. Yeah. Right? Think about all the psychology majors and fucking yes. out there who are like, who are you to talk about? You know, like the, the digital world is full of that. Like you have no official qualification to talk about what you're talking about. She's a super smart girl though, hey. Like, um, You're a smart I think, bloke. No, I, I just mean to say that she, she's been doing what she's been doing um, like as an influencer for a long time outside of that degree and I think she's smart enough to know and I'm just kind of analyzing like what you're proposing and like, I'm thinking how did she come to this Paul's like fuck what's Joey getting me into yeah go <laughs> yeah, yeah. but um like she she knows that um she's still a voice piece for her audience you know even though there are other you know psychology majors and professors out there who have got all the information in the world she's there digesting it for her people in a way that they can understand relevant to their situation so i guess she finds some empowerment in that i guess the other piece that um you know as like i see what she does is she's she cites facts as in science on studies she's not out there and, and i'm just thinking and i haven't seen one of those posts for a while she's she's not trying to make her own opinions of things that, like it well she might have a point of view but she'll start in something that she learned from a textbook Yep. Or from a paper or something like that. Which I guess, you know, that... She's keeping it very credible. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So in that way, it's... it's There's, you know, there's reason and there's some, some ground to speak with confidence. Absolutely. Mm. And I think that that's the... I think that, like, when you look at it objectively, mm. like, yeah, that's pretty clear. She's acknowledging... This is, I'm not an expert here. Yep. Because she's like, hey, here's what I learned at uni today. Yes. Right? Yep. So you're like, okay, she's not pretending to be someone she's not. And then she's like, here's this, this thing that I learned. This is what the science shows. You're like, okay, it's credible. Yep. But then she's adding her layer of interpretation, which is, well, this is how this concept yep. or law or whatever is relevant in your situation mm. with... Mm your poor relationship with food or the fact that you find it hard to be consistent with exercise. Yep. That, that moment there is very open to, I think, to criticism. Mm. And because it is subjective. It's like, well, this is just my take on it. Mm. Um, so while I think, yeah, she does a good job of sort of like keeping it watertight, it's, it can never truly be watertight, right? No, just you actually- You are opening yourself up. It, totally. Even just by making the post, you're highlighting something. And yeah. you're, you're sticking your neck out, so to speak, to, to highlight something that you think that's important. So you could totally feel like an imposter from just ground zero. That's right. And, and I mean, like, you know, I got a bit of a presence online. I feel... Come on, man. Don't be so humble. Oh, bitch, I got the presence. Give us the numbers, bro. What are the Shona's numbers talking like? about me on her podcast. That's what's <laughs> up. <laughs> I learned this Tables thing from two. JB Joey. <laughs> Can't, um, you can't see right now, but I'm doing the fingertip. Yeah, the, like yeah, I, I, or the power fingers one. That power one. Fingers. Mm, yes. Um, oh no, it's we. It's, <laughs> shit. <out>. Um, <laughs> but the. But here's the thing: you stick your neck out, 
like every time you go on social media mm-hmm. and you stick your neck out in so many ways because for every study that you cite, there is probably a study that will be counter to your to what your the findings of your <sighs> study were, right? Mm-hmm. Probably actually all like almost all the time. Yeah. So there's always someone will be like that study was disproven or another study that was done uh, showed that right. Uh. Um, and the other thing is like who are you to talk about this? Like irrespective of what you're saying, you are not qualified to talk about this. This could be triggering for people. You could, you know, like you could be upsetting someone. Like there's that's, so- That's insensitive to what's happening in the Middle East. Well, that's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> you were going to get shot by whatever. Yeah. People chop you down, right? <laughs> yeah. So I think that, that like my, you know, to, to take a sort of side track on it, Mm. my stance as someone who teaches you know with our coaches course i teach this basic social media marketing to the to the in that course yep and i tell the guys like you're all going to feel like you're unqualified to talk about this stuff like imposter syndrome is real but here's the thing like i go through imposter syndrome every time i post something shona all these big influencers probably encounter that to some degree all the time as well they've just found a way to disregard that feeling and lean in more on what's the value that i can bring to my audience like Mm. my message to the world is more important Mm. than my little bit of vulnerability or Mm. insecurity about what i am and not qualified in that is so true because i think yeah no matter how confident someone looks or how famous they are no one escapes that feeling it's just how they deal with that uh against the positive sides of it and when the positive side grows big enough that that the the negative sides diminish and and like you said they see the weight in the value and yeah that's that's a really great way of putting it and um yeah fuck I, i think of like you know hollywood stars they 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 have every reason to feel the most vulnerable when they open their mouth just because there's so many eyes on them. True. Potentially. But yeah, that's... So even you explain it as simple as you do... They have an out though because they're just... They're always pretending. <laughs> I, you know, I'm just playing a role. I'm just pretending. Like actually. I, I mean that... Whereas I think, in, you know, like I actually... Because for, a, you know, to take an influencer, unless they're playing a character all the time, like a, they're a comedic account or whatever... Mm. but you're putting yourself out there like this is actually what i feel and this is what i believe it's my world view mm. you can't hide you know whereas brad pitt can be like i was just playing a role even if you like you explained it quite simply the kind of uh the value and seeing you know the positive side and, and i guess that's pushing the people why hey you, you know this is the pathway to overcoming that imposter syndrome still fucking really hard to do right so hard so hard it's still that's black belt shit it's paralyzing yeah it's paralyzing yeah so how do we do it joe well, that's a good question <laughs> Polly. um i mean i i you know i on the coaches course right mm. there's 10 15 20 people there let's say the majority of them almost all of them 95 percent of the people there are on social media right 95 percent of them are on instagram Mm. i know this because i ask it everyone like who has an instagram account Mm -hmm. and pretty much all the hands go up right there's usually one or one person maybe two that are like no you're like fair enough they do they turned it off two weeks ago by the way (laughs) yeah (laughs) because they they crashed and burned (laughs) that's right (laughs) taking a break (laughs) and then of those 95 that 95 percent i ask who checks it every day and it's usually 100 percent of those people so we're all there that's the first thing to establish now the majority of those people of that group are on the coaching journey Mm -hmm. and i would say at least half of them are actively posting about training and stuff Mm -hmm. But usually half of them, they haven't quite committed to being a coach yet. They're just like a, they're just into training. So maybe they post some clips of their training and then just other stuff. But by being at that course is, you know, if you come to the 
coach's certificate, coach's intensive. It's usually an acknowledgement that I'm interested in coaching and this is a direction I'm headed in. Mm-hmm. So I, my point is always, well, you're on that journey and let's say 12, 18, 24 months from now, you're going to be a PT. And you're then going to be obliged within your business to talk about being a personal trainer, to offer your services and to teach people things and be helpful to your audience, right? You are your product, you, you know, whether you like it or not. Yeah, and everyone, you know, we've got a gym full of coaches. They all have social media accounts, right? So it's, it's like that's who you're becoming. And so if you're all on this journey of education and transforming from, you know, whatever, you work in banking right now and, you know, and you're making, you know, transitioning into being a coach and shit and you're learning this stuff, you should, why don't you share that journey? Like, wouldn't that be cool to take your audience on that ride with you? So by the time you are a coach, it's like, fuck yeah, I've been waiting for, for Paulie to get his certificates. Holy shit, he just landed a job working at that gym. How sick is this? I've been following this journey for two and a half years. Masterful, Joe. I was trying to make the connection from the original conversation right with, <laughs> with Sam and Shona, but it's so fucking true. Why not do that? You know, that would actually, that's a masterful way to do it. Like, take them on the journey with you, learn and practice, you know, incrementally as you go. Because once you get there, say you didn't do something like that and you didn't tend to that corner of the garden, it's got, it, you know, it's really hard to then jump in at that point because you're like, oh God, I'm with an authority now. I have to go from zero to 100. That's right. And there's no, there's no, uh, no one's warm. That's it. right. There's no, um, what do you call it, the start of a book? The preface? Pre- preface. There's none of that. It's just, oh, he's PT. He must do double body weight this and handstand push up that. <laughs> Whatever that might be. Yeah, and no one, like, y- there's no allies in that. Yeah. It, it's like we say with the people that want to work in our gyms, come and be a member here for three months first. Mm-hmm for many reasons but one of the key reasons being that you will become friends with the tribe you will Mm. become one of them and those people will be your supporters when you transition into becoming a coach Mm -hmm. when one of us rises to hey guys i'm actually i'm going in on this shit and i'm going to start coaching some classes and monday night's my first session as an assistant coach people like fuck yeah they're fans yeah they're like they want to see you win Whereas when you show up, when, like when we employ a coach that the tribe doesn't know and we say, hey, this is so-and-so, he's like super good at, you know, handstands and shit. You're going to love him. He's elite. And then he's up there in front of the class on the, on the first week. Class is like, who the fuck is this guy? Mm-hmm. Like they got no buy-in on you. No, they got no respect for you actually. So like, and, that, and we've had that, right? Where it's really tricky to overcome. You're like trying to commit. No, no, he's great. Give him a chance. He's got a funny personality, but you'll get to know him. Yeah. So it's like you either, yeah, you can, you can build supporters and momentum and take people on that journey with you. While practicing, you know, the thing that's hard to do in little bits, little tiny steps. Yeah. yeah. You're like sharpening your sword. Yes. Every time you post, you're talking about it. You're building the habit. Mm-hmm. You're getting consistent with it. And that's, I would say like, to your point about not having to go from zero to a hundred, it's like zero to a hundred on multiple fronts. If you haven't done this, when you get to that place, okay, now you've got to, I don't know, figure out how you're going to start to talk about this shit, Mm. but you've also got to factor it into, oh shit, I need to do this like three to five days a week. Where do I find the time? Mm. Oh, how do I put a video together? How do I do captions? Like all those logistical parts of creating content. Mm you haven't learned yet plus doing the thing itself yeah plus being creative it's Uh, really hard there's so much bandwidth required to to learn all of that at one go that's a very good piece of advice and a very good observation um that you cut across and that's yeah that's great advice to anyone um doing that i'm thinking you know of a few that i know they could take that on or just we kind of know it we all need to do it but um i guess that yeah, that's just a really good point as to why you would start to do it earlier on or now. And it's never too late to start um, because it is like a practice. So like if we go to actually doing it, 
So like, yeah, on, on the macro view, you know, start early and do it, but actually doing it, you know, it's building the habit, as you were saying, of fucking coming up with something, writing something, posting something and making it part of your your thing. Because it's, it's not, it, for most people, it's not part of what they do. It's just a leisurely thing that you'd post whenever you felt like it. But it's just trying to weave that into not your lifestyle, but your your weekly things that you do. And and practicing like fucking mastering, you said sharpening the sword, and it's all storytelling is kind of what you're kind of explaining, which is yeah, tell the story all the way through. That takes practice because it's writing, it's knowing how to take the photos and what to take a photo of. Yeah. Um, to to be able to tell that story, that fucking takes practice. It does. You know, to to that point, your situation, Sam referenced like when he read the email mm. that you where you said in the newsletter to the to the gym members, you yes. know how you're gonna do this thing, yep. and, and why. He was like, man, like that's such a powerful story, you know. Yep. And yeah, like that story is everything. Yep. And I think the I think the story, like even if let's say your writing skills aren't great your writing skills are great right like i read your newsletters they're, they're great i'm trying to get better yeah always right but they're really good um say even if your writing skills aren't that great i think the the macro thing like so the micro is the post that you put out <coughs> yesterday mm. but the macro thing is the macro message that people are taking away from that is like how cool like paulie is a he's a you know he's a father he's a businessman he's going back to study because he feels passionately about it and he feels passionate about it for the how fucking cool is that like there's a story there of you know like go and be a beginner in something go and do new things don't be afraid to take a risk mm. you know don't be afraid to be inspired and and try something new um you know you could read into it so many different things but that's what people read in it so even if your post is shit and the photo shit they take that macro message and that's like the 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 effect of that is like i I really like paulie's stuff i like what he's doing i'm here on this journey with him yeah that that that's a really good point hey uh not just about my story but even if you post this shit it's like uh it's like a mapping out because because all of if you if you if you start telling the story say as you're becoming the coach you know, you're building that asset, which is like a timeline, which has little stories all the way through. And even if your posts aren't that great, you're showing that you were in Queensland doing a workshop last year. And then later you were on, you, you lifted this thing or you did this movement thing. And then I can see you coaching someone here. And then you went to Europe, you know, over summer or whatever that is, but you're kind of putting a flag in that, in that storyline as opposed to just seeing an A and a B. You're kind of showing like how you got there. And even if it's bad is, is kind of the point you're making. It's not great. You, you're, still, you're still building a macro story, a macro journey. Yeah. Yeah. But also get better at it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Every time it's practice. Yeah. yeah. So I guess off the back of that, to finish, you don't really have an option now. You specifically about not telling that story <laughs> i'm i honestly what i was saying to sam yesterday was i only decided two weeks ago i've known in the in uh, that i've always left the newsletter to the last piece of fucking time on friday you know like i always rush it in and every week i'm like unsatisfied i'm like fuck i've rushed it and it's not exactly how i want it and fuck i I want to use this as a tool to try and get better, like, you know, consciously look into a few things, try a few techniques. And I started that a few weeks ago. Um, so I'm blushing when you tell me that my writing is good. Um, I'd like to get even better. I'm not sure how I'm going to tell this story, but I feel, I feel you encouraging me. Yesterday, Sam was very encouraging. Um, and I was like fucking super chuffed after we, we, we spoke. Um, so let's see how it goes from here. Cool. All eyes on Polly. <laughs> hey, um, we're going to wrap it up there, guys. I wanted to ask if you enjoy this show, there's one simple action that you can do which goes a long way for us, which is to like 
and subscribe to the show and leave us a five-star review. So if you're on Spotify, uh, I think you just hit the follow thing. So you're subscribed to it and then just leave us a review. Um, takes you like a second and a half, but it helps the app, helps Spotify recommend the show to other people who are going to like it. So it helps us spread our message. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.